I have some theories, folks. I've got theories. And we are recording. Now let me zoom in a bit here so I can see my notes. Finally, it's here. Here we are. I am so sorry for the delay, but it's happening. Today we are going to be reviewing The Dark Tower Book 3, The Wastelands. Roland, Eddie, and Susanna continue their journey to the Dark Tower and yada yada yada. Cool stuff happens along the way. You know the story. If you're watching this video, you're familiar with the premise of The Dark Tower, and you should be ready to get on to book three and looking for some thoughts on it, or you're wondering for my thoughts on book three and you've already read it. Let me just start by saying this is the best Dark Tower book by far, absolutely. Knocks the other two out of the park. Don't get me wrong, I liked the other two, but this book feels like the idea and vision of Midworld is fleshed out in Stephen King's head now. He is no longer setting things up. The world is in motion. We are now rolling through it, okay? Gunslinger was, we were mysteriously learning piece by piece about Midworld. And then um, a drawing of the three, it was the magic system kind of being dumped on us. Now we have our two kind of our setting established and the magic system established. Now we're seeing it in use and the world is coming together. And on that note, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the lore and magic system and world building in this. Absolutely brilliant, okay? Now, the way he sets up Midworld in this is we have elements and hints of otherworldly things going on and sort of um, crossing over between what we know of what Midworld is and what we know of our own world. And we know there's been some blending going on. This expands on that tenfold, okay? Now, if you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about, but the City of Lud, when that scene happened, or when they arrived at the city, I was like, wait a second. This is all too familiar. This is crazy. And if you haven't read the book, well, you'll know what I mean once you do. And we're going to get to spoilers shortly, but I just want to cover my base ground here for the people who haven't read the book yet and are considering reading the book. You should, because it's the best Dark Tower book. And like I said, a bunch of our questions get answered in this book, but about 90 more get asked and leave us struggling and grasping for answers. I remember the second I finished this book, I was like, holy heck, I need to get to the next one immediately. And then I didn't. I went on to the Dead Zone review coming for that soon. But I finished The Wastelands, and then when I went around and finally got to the fourth Dark Tower book... I sat there, closed my eyes, listened to the audiobook for, no joke, three hours straight, just sitting on my couch like this, because that's how fiending I was for new information about Midworld and for these questions to get elaborated on and expanded on. Stephen King is constantly raising the bar higher and higher for himself of Midworld and what Midworld can do in the story of the Dark Tower, what he can achieve and what he wants to tell. It's constantly evolving, and it's never sitting in the same place. Once you think you know where we're at, bam, it goes. And it just takes you in a whole other direction, and you're like, oh my lord. And on that note about Stephen King, I listened to The Wastelands audiobook read by Stephen King. His voice acting is absolutely insane. There's a character named Gasher or Nasher or something like that. Stephen King reading as Nasher slash Gasher slash whatever is top of the line stuff and the way Stephen King reads for Roland and Eddie and Jake is just so brilliant and it's so refreshing to hear the author's voice reading the book because we know that it must be his genuine actual interpretation of the text because when you hear an audiobook reader do it they're giving their best what they read the book and the characters to be when the author's reading it that is the characters and on top of that Stephen King absolutely just shatters any preconceived ideas that we might have of what the Dark Tower can and will be and shatters genre limitations for fantasy and just knocks them out of the park because Stephen King is not bound by genre when writing these Dark Tower books. For example, the first one was like this kind of a Western fantasy. Now, the second book was this th world-hopping thrill ride, almost modern crime drama, and now this third one is a mishmash of 90 other elements. Stephen King is not letting the fact that this is a fantasy story even remotely influence how he's going to write the books and how he's going to write the characters. 
And there are so many unique and cool ideas and possibilities being introduced the way Stephen King is using the magic system and the way he manipulates our understanding of the world. He is introducing some really cool concepts that can be explored really in any direction. And the lack of kind of uh, familiarity we have with the setting of Midworld and we can never get too comfortable because something new happens that shatters our ideas. Now, on that note, I am going to get into spoiler territory. And uh, yeah, because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Spoilers in three, two, one. The way Jake was brought back in this book was absolutely flawless. And in the second book, when Roland uh, saves Jake from the pusher, I was like, okay, Jake has got to come back. And when he died in the first Gunslinger book, I, I was thinking, he can't be dead. There's no way he's dead. There is, I... He was a big part of the marketing for the movie, and I've, I've, I've heard so much of this Jake character when seeing the Dark Tower film advertised. How can they just... There's seven books. How are they just going to get rid of Jake in the first one? And then when he saved him from that pusher, I was like, okay, let's go. And so the way the magic system is used and we see the doors and the portals being introduced between the world of Midworld and our world are just so next level. And I really enjoyed all the stuff with Jake. See have him having visions of Roland's quest influence his life and daily decisions. And when he's roaming around New York by himself and then finding that subway system. And then when he hops into Midworld and he meets that, I think he, it was like a kid and it was just kind of an industrial zone. And speaking of industrial, the, the positronics company that builds the massive bear robot thing. Like, I was not expecting a cybernetic bear out of anywhere when I was reading The Dark Tower. I'll tell you that for damn sure. Just the stuff that's introduced in this. Like, obviously, in the first Gunslinger book, we see when they're underground in the mountains, hints of, like, a subway station, and we know that there's some sort of industrialization left over in Roland's world. But they took it to the next level, just having mechanized things and androids and stuff like that i couldn't believe it it was so next level let me just look at my notes here and uh that allows so much introducing of new characters such as gasher and blaine and everyone from lud like the tiktok man when they got i couldn't quite tell when they were describing the city of lud i was like i can't is this a medieval city or is this like a modern city it kind of sounds like a modern city and then we get there and it's revealed this is an actual modern city. I I was blown away. I was like, holy shit. Okay, Midworld is not what I thought it was. It is going to next level places. Just the, the setting and the fellowship is built so well in this book. And when Eddie's hoping for a dinner with wise elves and they get with that weird group of people right before they go into Lud. And also on that note, I'm reading the illustrated editions and there are some illustrations in this book that are absolutely stunning. Like, look at that. Roland trying to get uh, Jake as he bursts through the door and the guardian is there saving the door. But on the note of Lud, let me just find here. We've got Gasher and Jake. That is absolutely insane. He's got the freaking hand grenade. Roland getting blessed with the cross necklace. There is just... The illustrated editions are so unbelievable, and the illustrations are done by um, Ned Dameron. Like, it, it, they're so beautiful. They are so beautiful. I am slowly getting extremely attached to the character of Roland Deschain, especially now that I'm almost done Wizarding Glass. This character of Roland is... Oh, he's getting so close to my heart, and I am extremely quickly getting extremely attached to the character of Jake. I love Jake so much, I just want to see him thrive and prosper in this world and be happy. And if he dies, I am going to lose my marbles. I swear to God, I love him so, so, so much. Eddie's cool, Susanna's cool, but Roland and Jake are like, oh, they hold a special place in my heart. The, really, the only other thing I can say is this book kind of ends on a non-ending, which is fine because it, it goes into the next book, but not even like it was a cliffhanger. Like, it literally just is a non-ending. Like, the book just stops and is like, okay, I guess I got to pick up the next one. Like, it's very random, and knowing that Stephen King didn't write them all at once, such, like something such as Lord of the Rings, it's a little bit lazy. I mean, they're just not doing an ending. They're like, ah, We'll leave it for next time. Like, bro, just do that as the climax scene. Like, do it as the climactic scene. Like, it'd, it'd be totally fine. 
But anyway, other than that, the book was an absolute masterpiece. I loved it. And also, now that we know a little bit about the magic system and portals and world hopping and stuff like that, I have some theories about how this relates to other Stephen King books, specifically relating to the Wastelands. Let me show you an illustration here. This illustration reminds me very much of something we have seen in another Stephen King film slash book that involves portals and going to other dimensions and stuff like that. I have some theories, folks. I've got theories. Other than that, that's my entire review for the Dark Tower. Oh wait, why don't I grab one more thing for you guys? Bam, Charlie the Choo Choo, the book that Jake finds in New York when he is searching for the portal back to Midworld. I picked up this little souvenir right when I finished The Wastelands. Anyways, pretty cool. I thought I would show that to you. Oh, let me grab a thumbnail pic too. So that is going to do it for today's review of Stephen King's The Dark Tower Book 3, The Wastelands. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a lovely, lovely day. Thanks a lot, guys.